Hello! I know I haven't posted anything in a really, really, really long time, and part of it is because I moved to uh, what I'm calling a farm. Um, it will be a farm of a type eventually, but right now it's, uh, you know, uh, mostly a, a food forest in progress. So I have been, this is my first spring on this property, um, so it's very exciting because I'm discovering all of the plants that are here, um, what grows well, what's just abundant, um, what's more rare and exciting. <laughs> um, I'm starting my own garden, so I'm growing all kinds of things, everything from the usual potatoes, peas, and carrots, um, and obviously uh, a dozen different kinds of leafy greens um, to some more experimental things. I've got some sweet potatoes, I've got watermelon, I've got um, just everything. Everything is in progress. Um, so I have the annual garden beds and a greenhouse, um, but I also, my main interest is following the sort of tenets of permaculture or what some people call nature culture, which is essentially mimicking the natural layers of the woods, of the forest. Um, so, you know, you've, you, you're, you've got everything from the canopy above you um, and the big uh, kind of foundational shade trees and then the set kind of micro ecosystems that that allows below them. So you build it from the, the canopy down all the way to the root layer um, and you include ground cover, you include, sh include shrubs, you include vines. Um, so it's a way of mindfully managing your woodland um, in a way that promotes edibles, um, including the edibles that are just naturally there uh, that, that grow in this region. And we have a ton of them, so I'm going to show you a lot of them. Um, and, you know, sort of gently discouraging some of the, the more invasive, uh, toxic, or just non-edible um, you know, non, the, the plants that are not serving the ecosystem as well and replacing them at the level of their layer. So instead of, uh, for example, a honeysuckle plant, which I have, you can see, I mean, really just anywhere I can't flip mid, mid record, um, but there's honeysuckle everywhere. And so instead of honeysuckle, I would like to replace those shrubs, um, with other shrubs, other, other more, um, you know, food producing shrubs like berry shrubs, um, particularly nitrogen fixing shrubs, uh, like, um, oh, well, among other things, autumn, autumn olive, sea berry or sea buckthorn, um, and just a variety of berry plants. So that's kind of the logic, but the, the, the overarching vision is that the forest takes care of itself. Nobody has to go out there and water. Nobody has to um, do any weeding or any pruning uh, or harvesting. It reseeds itself, it mulches itself, it redeposits, it redeposits nutrients into the soil every year. And so I am just extending that into the yard here um, in the in the orchard and the garden that I'm doing and also managing the woods that I have um, in just a more mindful way. So I am going to wander around and show you some of what we have. It's going to be just a long meandering wander um, if that is what you're into. If uh, you know, I love to watch those kinds of videos and just learn about native plants and all kinds of things. If that's not your jam, uh, there will be more specific videos coming out, but this is mostly what I'm um, devoting my time and attention to these days. So I uh, look forward to sharing lots more. Okay, let's go take a walk in the woods. I, first, I have to swap out my hat for my, m my mosquito PPE. All right, this is my uh, very beekeeper-esque mosquito protective hat. It's really more than mosquitoes. It's against the, the sort of swarming gnats that we have here. I don't think they're very aggressive and I don't think they even bite or if they do it's a very small bite but mostly the problem is once you get into the deeper woods they swarm around your head and it's very distracting and irritating um, and they have an occasional you'll, you'll get a, a random one that lands in your eyeball which is a very unpleasant experience so this is my solution works beautifully um, we do have a lot of ticks in these woods uh, and so I'll talk a bit about that too but um, the, you know, I, I'm in short sleeves now. Um, I do have long pants on and I have my feet covered. That's the main 
point of uh, entry that they have is they crawl up your legs and look for a good place to bite you. So if you can keep them from accessing your skin from the ankles up, um, that's the best way to do it. Uh, usually I will spot them before they get too far uh, and uh, give them a new home. <laughs> um, and if they do land on my bare arms, I should be able to see them quickly, but I will do a, a thorough tick check when I am done with my woods walk. Um, and that's just a, a regular, I do that a couple times a day. Um, so, all right, let us go exploring. I thought we would just wander around the woods a little bit and look at some wild edibles and some stuff that I've planted and just introduce you to the farm and the uh, the woods so this guy right here is just a blackberry plant that i planted because we don't have any and should do well uh it has little buds coming up and it's still staked to help it along um but yeah i transplanted it about a week ago and seems to be doing well so all through here we've got a mix. So the purple stuff is purple dead nettle, which is edible, member of the nettle family, not of the stinging variety. Um, and the little blue flowers are cr called creeping charlie. It's a really common ground cover around here. Also edible. Um, here, I'm pretty sure, is the remnants of some of last year's wild amaranth. Um, which comes up a little later in the season. So that's pretty cool. Uh, gonna be exciting to grab some of those seeds and make some flour out of it. Uh, let's see, what else do we have over here? Well, <laughs> we have everywhere you look, there's garlic mustard. Um, that's gonna be a very common sight. It is edible. Uh, it's high in natural cyanide, which you can cook out with um, various cooking methods. And also, if you grind it up or you chop it, um, that releases a lot of the cyanide gas as well. Um, it's an invasive, so you don't have to feel bad about eating it whatsoever. Um, and it is everywhere. So it's a little uh, true name, garlicky and mustardy. It's sort of like, it's, you know, it's in the brassica family, so it's got that kind of um, bite to it. And you can make mustard out of the seeds. So. That's my plan. I don't know if this one, I might have to look at a different one to see. Yeah, you can kind of, kind of get a sense here. So the little, around the flowers, the little um, stems that are poking up are going to become seed pods. That one has a better example. So that's where the little seeds are going to live. These are, you can, you can eat these now. Um, as is. You can eat the flower, the leaves, or anything that you want. Um, I wouldn't recommend the stems. Stems are pretty woody and not very enticing. But the seed pods are nice. Just kind of a little, got a little bite to them. And I plan to make legit mustard out of them uh, later in the season. You can also eat the roots. You can make like a horseradish out of it. So that's garlic mustard. Uh, what else do we have? Everywhere you look, um, in addition to the garlic mustard, we have the most abundant ground cover is uh, wild raspberry, I think. It hasn't blossomed yet. Um, it's getting close. It's a variety that I have not seen before, um, but perfectly edible. This, all of this beauteousness is chickweed. Um, very edible. Uh, one, I think it's the first thing I ever foraged when I was a kid, <laughs> and the first wild edible that I learned was edible. Okay, so now we, we go into the woods. This is a walnut tree, a small one. Uh, there's a lot of felled, naturally and not so naturally, um, other trees around here. And this is about where we go on tick watch, so I occasionally just take a little look-see and make sure nobody's hitching a ride. Because um, we do have a lot of ticks in here. And birdies. 
All right, so this is the real, the first real prize in here. This is a massive walnut tree. This guy's huge. Oh man, little gnats are bad out here. So this walnut tree, black walnut tree, uh, if we look around, we can find remnants of last year's and previous year's walnuts. Um, if the squirrels haven't made off with all of them. <laughs> Glorious tree. This is where I first noticed the woods are under attack by this vine. This vine, all of these Tarzan vines here, I've come through and cut these. Um, they are called bittersweet. Um, there's two varieties of bittersweet. American bittersweet, which is edible and benign, makes nice little berries. Um, and this is goes by various names. Um, Asian bittersweet being the most common is a look-alike uh, that can hybridize with the American variety, produces berries that are poisonous to humans, and is incredibly aggressive and climbs and climbs and climbs. And I mean, you can see how much is here. Uh, girdles the tree and you know chokes out the tree, chokes it out at the canopy with its leaves and flowers, and also literally strangles it to death. So I've been out here quite aggressively <laughs> going after the bittersweet. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see. A lot of it is still dripping sap from where I cut it. Uh, so yeah, this one is. Um, this looks like it's mostly healed up. It will sprout again. Um, so I will be back out here continuing to hack away at it. Ideally, what you do is you find the root um, there's so much of it, it's actually hard for me to tell where exactly it begins because there are so many little tendrils. So I've just been cutting it at the point that it starts to strangle. Um, I plan to stay on top of it as part of my forest management strategy. Um, if I was not a dirty hippie, I'd come out here with some Roundup and douse the stumps after I chop them off, which is the usual uh, way of dealing with it. More garlic mustard. Oh, I almost neglected. Um, this is a persimmon tree. It is completely strangled <laughs> by um, uh, some bittersweet, some honeysuckle, lots of there's there's Virginia creeper in there. There's a lot trying to strangle this guy. Um, there's a little stand of them here, so only the female persimmon trees bear fruit. Um, but I think the odds of this one, that one, or this one being a female are decent. So I'm hoping for some fruit. The bark is really cool and very distinctive on persimmon. Oh my gosh, the bugs are crazy. Okay, this little flower on this little guy um, is, this is a little baby pawpaw tree. Pawpaws are North America's um, native tropical fruit. People describe it as a cross between a mango and a banana. It's uh, Michael's favorite fruit. I have never had it uh, and we have about a billion pawpaw trees <laughs> including some very mature ones so I'm really looking forward to trying that. It comes into season later in the fall and um, you never see it in stores because it doesn't keep very well. It's very fussy and prone to bruising and such. I don't know what that is. That's a new tree. I'm gonna have to look this guy up later. Whoa, this is really cool. <laughs> this is very distinctive bark and I'm kind of zoomed in here, but I don't know what these leaves are. So I'm gonna, gonna have to look that up for you later and I'll, I'll put it what it is in the, um, in the titles. It's got the same kind of general bark as the autumn olive, although these fuzzy leaves are different. Okay, I'm going to figure out who you are. Hmm, interesting. There's cattail action. More raspberries everywhere. Bugs are not as bad in the sun. Okay, tick, tick, check. The Lone Star tick has come out to play just in the last couple of days and is very aggressive compared to the deer ticks. Uh, the Lone Star Tick is the tick that is famous for causing meat allergies. 
in individuals that it bites. Sort of a autoimmune kind of process. Not something I have to worry about, although not looking to get tick bites in general. They are around. We have lots of deer ticks too. They hitch rides on the dogs. They come in. Um, the rule with ticks is you just check every day and make sure you don't have any hanging out on you for longer than about 36 hours. That's when they really start transferring disease. This is a, I am pretty sure, a hackberry, uh, another ed edible uh, berry producing tree, common in North America and the Northeast specifically. I haven't totally positively ID'd it, but it matches all the descriptions. So if people are watching this and they see things I'm not mentioning or things I'm getting wrong, um, I'm still learning all of this flora and fauna. So for example, I think this guy over here is a tree of heaven. Very straight trunk, distinctive bark, but I can't get close enough to any buds to really figure it out. You can see more of this bittersweet. This is what it does. It like Tarzans over uh, and it's in that other walnut tree. Um, oh my gosh, the bugs are crazy. I might have to finish this later. So, um, you know, I trace this all the way through this canopy and I cut it down here um, where, yeah, it looks like it stopped making sap. But all of these I'm going to have to follow up with because they will sprout again and they will snake toward each other again and try to reunite. And I don't want that. <laughs> so instead of using evil herbicide, I basically just have to walk through the woods all the time and, and keep on top of things. Okay. All right. Uh, lots of wild rose. Lots. Um, so this is wild rose, I think. Maybe not. I don't see any rose hips. It looks a little bit, it's the wrong color for um, barberry, but it looks more like barberry. So time will tell on that one. Oh, okay, here, this is interesting. These are wild grapes. If I can get it to focus. So not every vine out here is evil. <laughs> this is a, a very delicious vine. Um, so the main vine, and that's some dogwood flowers up there. Main vines that I've seen are uh, some greenbrier, some Virginia creeper, um, a ton of bittersweet, and this wild grape. I wish we had more wild grape, but it is what it is. Down here is a mix in this ground cover, mostly first year garlic mustard. Garlic mustard is a biennial, so it, um, the, in its first year, it, it looks like this. Uh, in its second year, it looks like the taller stalks with the white flowers that we saw earlier. Um, it's edible at all stages. It's a little more tender and tasty when it's at this stage. You do have to distinguish it um, from violets, which are also very common ground cover. This looks like mostly garlic mustard, but I'll, when I see some violet, I'll point it out. It's a very similar heart-shaped leaf um, and also kind of likes the same conditions to hang out in the understory where it's a little shady. So they are companions. Okay, I can't go up this way. This property, um, somebody years ago went to some trouble and put in some of this landscaping fabric and tried to build some trails out here, uh, but it's all, of course, overgrown and now they're basically deer trails, but my long-term food forest plans will put some more, you know, little wood chip tra trails through here. 
wonderful to listen to the birdies and be surrounded by a cloud of bugs. Check for ticks crawling up your legs. I have I have rehomed three Lone Star ticks today alone um, that have hitched rides either on me or on the dogs. They go in a little jar, they go across the street. That is how we're, we're level five vegans around here. We actually rehome ticks. Of another walnut tree. I have come through and cut all of this bittersweet. It's hanging there. It's so gross. Oh, here's some nice, nice, disgusting sap action you can see here. I mean, this stuff, it's still dripping. Like I was in here a week ago. <laughs> it's amazing. It's dripped all down here. Just saturated this. It's so gross. Oh my God. It's evil, 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 evil. I really, I have, I, I saw someone post in a group, a homesteading group that they, bittersweet activates their fight instinct and I totally get it. Um, I feel exactly the same way. This is a giant dock plant, um, which is edible, roots are edible. Uh, yeah, just sort of a fundamental good foraging plant, you know, because it's absolutely everywhere. That's a particularly big one. Um, I haven't seen any... We have a lot of plantain too, although I don't see too much out here. Not the, not the plantain that's a banana analog, <laughs> but just the, the little leafy green. I still haven't seen any violets. Oh, these guys, these guys, I think are um, called fleabane. I, I think it's daisy fleabane. They produce a nice little flower, technically edible. Nothing that spectacular, but you know, part of the ecosystem. I still don't see any violets. They're hiding. I'm probably getting too much sun for them. This is my, my best hypothesis of what happened here. Um, and I'm just leaving all of this because this is habitat for all kinds of little creatures. Um, so I'm not motivated to clear this out. It's good biomass. I might clear it over here just to clear the trail, but um, I'm, oh God, this, the, the bittersweet is still dripping. I mean, seriously, it was a week ago. It's amazing, amazing stuff. Um, I think what happened here because I can actually see the canopy of this beautiful walnut tree. We have a lot of walnut trees. Um, that that uh, I cut that Tarzan rope down here so it's not gonna grow this year. I think somebody actually went to the trouble of cutting some of this some time ago where it's kind of healed up. Um, and I think even pulled it out of the tree. It would not have fallen out like this on its own. Um, so I think because this is pretty close to the house, there was actually some forest management that got this far in at some point fairly recently. Not this last year, but not that long ago. Who else is in here? I think I walked past another, it's a dogwood. Those beautiful, I don't know if you can see some white flowers back there. Yep, boys and their trucks are out. It's country life. This. Okay, so maybe I'm biased with the barberry because the barberry that's close to the house is kind of a purplish tinge. Um, but this is clearly barberry, um, which is not just edible, but a legit superfood. Uh, and it is, looks a lot like what we saw further back. So that probably was barberry. So maybe we have a couple of varieties. I 
hope you like raspberries because that's what everybody's getting for their uh, their gifts this year. <laughs> You're getting raspberry preserves. <laughs> This is some raspberry that I came through when I first got here in, in January. Uh, a lot of these canes I chopped down. Um, in fact, you can see this is one that I chopped, chopped away um, just to make room to wander through here. I wasn't too worried about it growing back and it is <laughs> no problem. It's like, thank you for pruning me. I will be more productive now. <laughs> Garlic mustard, garlic mustard, garlic mustard. Oh, this one has really good little seed pods in progress. Problem with garlic mustard, uh, there are a couple of problems. One is that it crowds out the other um, ground cover understory plants, not just because it's so prolific and successful, but it actually um, secretes a compound into its roots that uh, deter the growth of other plants, which is not very polite. <laughs> and, um, and it really allows it to take over. And they, um, the deer don't eat them. The deer eat everything else. The deer prefer to browse on uh, native plants. And so the garlic mustard gets a leg up there as well, which, you know, it's, it would all be fine, except there's, um, there's a West Virginia, oh, I think it's a moth species that actually is very attracted to garlic mustard to, to lay its eggs. Um, but when it does, its eggs don't survive. So it's a little bit of a trap for that moth um, and it's contributing to the uh, the near extinction of it so you know it's not harmless so eat the invasives you're, you're doing everybody a favor by doing so this is sticky willy it has like little um, when you grab it it sticks to you it sticks to your hands and your clothes it has other names but that's my favorite uh, also edible cleavers is what I grew up hearing it called. Ooh, more just little habitat brush piles. Um, you know, it's firewood if we need it, but uh, it's there are lots of little little pumpkins living in here. Little mice, little bunnies, little birdies, all sorts of things. This is some glorious hardwood that got piled up before we got here. Same thing. I don't have a lot of incentive to disturb that. All right, well, I will take you back with me when I go back out and find some other stuff. But that's, that is a few of the many splendored uh, plants and, and edible plants that are just growing in the backyard here. All right, this is white pine. Uh, lots of parts of the tree are edible, but it's best for um, the tea that you can make out of the needle tips. The new ones are the tastiest and very high in vitamin C and lots of other good stuff. Um, this is a totally different part of the woods. We have a lot of bamboo here. I think um, it was imported by a previous homeowner. This is our driveway. This is the, the wild <laughs> princess beast of the northeast. Hey, princess. Princess. Yeah, she's on a mission. She's busy. She can't be bothered. Um, bamboo is edible too, although not when it's this size. If you can find shoots, um, that is the way to go. Dandelions, obviously the original edible, all parts of the plant, very edible, very medicinal, uh, including the root. Oh, there are some bamboo shoots right there. Look at those guys. Those are freaking cool looking. Just gonna let them do their thing. 
This is some more of that flea bane. It's kind of droopy and it hasn't flowered yet, but it's getting there. This is more like, um, you know, the edge plants that you'll see in the city kind of growing out here. Oh, this guy is an autumn olive tree. So a lot of people hate the autumn olive. Um, it smells amazing and very prolific. Great nitrogen fixer and is beloved by permaculture, um, but it does tend to crowd out other native plants a little bit. Uh, so you need to not let it get too out of control. Okay, pumpkin, come here. Come here. She's very interested in whatever's going on over here. This is some kind of gnarly thistle. I don't know exactly what kind or if it's edible or some more of that field garlic. This is some of last year's, oh, I was thinking, oh yeah, this is um, another kind of thistle. You can see some of it downed over here. It gets very tall. Amazing. But this is, this is the logic of permaculture. I mean, this stuff just falls down, you know, it dies. It becomes part of the forest floor. It contributes nutrients to the forest floor and mulches it. And so it's just a self-sustaining ecosystem. Nobody needs to come in here and water anything. Uh, nobody needs to, to um, plant anything new or harvest anything. It just takes care of itself. So the logic of permaculture or um, sometimes called nature culture which I, I like some of the sentiments of nature culture better, um, is that you want to mimic this. And see, there's even, there's the sort of presence of, of animals as part of this system. So this is um, deer or possibly rabbit droppings. I think deer. There was something in here that was bigger, <laughs> as long as we're on poop watch. Um, oh, here we go. So, not sure who left this. Wasn't a deer. Um, we do have some bears around here. Uh, we have all kinds of, all kinds of little guys. Could have been a dog. Could have been a human. <laughs> um, I have no idea how long it's been here, but it's part of the, uh, the system. You can make compost out of dog manure, human manure. <laughs> um, it is possible. There are some safety issues. That's something we're not doing yet, but, uh, you know, haven't rolled out for the apocalyptic future. This is a good view. You can really see in those trees um, the effect of this, everything that looks like the strands of hair, the tangled hair. That is all of um, the the evil vine that I was pulling out earlier, the bittersweet, really, really nasty stuff. And there are some trees that, you know, they didn't make it. Like this guy in the middle there, he is no more. He is just a, he's just become a, a pillar for, uh, looks like a lot of Virginia creepers climbing him, which is fine, um, but also a lot of bittersweet. And the bittersweet has, oh yeah, here's, oh my god, this is a <laughs> major stash of it. So that's a little too, that's a huge thicket of raspberries here, so I have not traipsed through there to clear that out. Um, I'm not sure what kind of tree that is. Um, I've been sort of prioritizing the, the crop trees to save them from the evil bittersweet. Uh, but eventually I hope I can do all of them. But there's just so much. I mean, there is just productivity and food everywhere you look. It's so you can tell from afar this tree with the silver sheen to it. Um, that's an autumn olive. Uh, it kind of advertises itself with a little flag um, of the silvery cast on the back of the leaves. There, um, those white flowers in the background. There is a cherry tree. There's a wild cherry tree back there. I'm not sure if that is it. I don't think so. That's probably just another dogwood. Um, I think the wild cherry is further in that direction. And we also have another one on the other side of the property. 
uh, incredible wild food, especially paired with the, the black walnut. Um, going to be a little hard to harvest, so that's going to be an interesting challenge. If anyone has any great ideas about how to shake out some wild cherry, um, I'd love to hear it. This is, this is incredible. This is, this is just honeysuckle, which is invasive and grows like crazy. This whole shrub is honeysuckle, um, covered in bittersweet, but underneath it, growing very happily here in the edge, um, in the shade, are a bunch of pawpaws. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least nine trees that I can just spot readily that are flowering um, and are gonna produce fruit for us. And they're small enough and light enough that that fruit is very easy to harvest. You just gather it as soon as it drops or you shake it off. So um, yeah, we're gonna have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of pawpaw around here. We'll probably, um, going to buy a whole extra chest freezer just for the pawpaw. I am not kidding. Oh, that's my office over there, that bell tent. That's my, uh, my outdoor space. I'll do a separate tour of that at some point. So beautiful. Coming back and checking out this uh, lovely last year's amaranth, um, aka pigweed, which is an incredibly abundant plant. Uh, many edible parts, including the seeds and the leaves. Really, really great kind of staple um, food forest crop. I'm really glad to. Oh, okay. I've been waiting to see this. I think that is poison ivy. I don't know what else it would be. Uh, obviously there are lots of things that are leaves of three, let them be, but um, this has the hallmarks of poison ivy uh, with the red stem and the serration on the leaves. Um, looks right and the sort of notched lobs of the leaf look right. I'll have to double check, but this would be exactly where it would grow. Um, and uh, I've been expecting it. I've been expecting you. I've been surprised I haven't seen it until now, so good to know it's here. Uh, I will pull as much of that as I can as I find it, and I don't want dogs brushing into it. Dang it. Ah, oh, geez. Yeah, there's more. There's more. That uh, has the shiny look that new ones will have, which is another confirming detail. Yeah, it looks a hell of a lot like poison ivy. There's some more. Surrounded by raspberries. There, I mean, there are lots of things that look like poison ivy, so I have many times thought that I've run into it, and it's just been like box elder seedlings or raspberry seedlings, but that looks pretty distinctive. cypress tree providing nice shade over here for poison ivy to grow this is our tiny little chicken coop which is awaiting some rescue chickens kind of parts of it fell apart in the last windstorm so I need to anchor it down Before we put any little chickens in it. A little seedling for some tree. Little baby trees all over the place. 
Well, these are some pretty uninteresting mushrooms. I think these are turkey tail, which is the only kind of mushroom that I've seen out here so far. Um, I'm not much of a mushroom huntress and don't know too much about them. Um, I don't think turkey tails are toxic, but they're also not particularly, they're, they're pretty tough and, um, you know, not the most edible mushroom around, but you can certainly make a tea out of them. All right, well, that is a general intro to everything that's going on here. Um, I'll have lots more to share as we get further into spring and as more stuff starts to grow and I learn more about the farm. And I would love to connect with other people who are doing, uh, you know, a permaculture type approach um, with their homesteading. I will be back uh, to share more as more emerges and let me know what else you'd be interested in learning about the farm and I will talk to you soon. This is a smaller, we've got some monsters of these guys. This is a little, little one. Um, there are some that are, I don't know, at least 10 times as big as that guy. It's a uh, mullen, which is a very prized medicinal herb. Um, really good to have on hand for a lot of inflammatory conditions. And I bet now that I'm in the driveway, I can find some plantain. That's... Maybe some or maybe dandelion. Ooh, there's new stuff out here I haven't seen before. There's some plantain. So this sort of distinctive broad leaves. Um, great to know where some of this is in case you get a bee sting or uh, attacked by some um, you know, a nest of wasps or something. <laughs> um, very soothing, anti-inflammatory. So good to have on hand. And yeah, there's definitely some new residents in the neighborhood here. So I'm just gonna have to keep learning who everybody is. There's that crazy bristly thistle again. Yeah, plantain loves disturbed areas, so the edge of your driveway is probably primo. This is all uh, multiflora rose, so probably within a couple of weeks, if that. Oh, look at that ladybug. Oh, I don't know if it's focusing on her. She's lovely. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. You look like a rose yourself. Um, these buds are all going to be wild roses. And then the rose hips, of course, are great vitamin C, um, great medicinal, really good addition to tea. I have some cultivated rose planted um, in various places around the house. All, all varieties of rose are edible. Um, all varieties of rose hips are edible, so it's a nice addition um, that adds beauty and utility to the landscape. 